All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, so my name is Aaron. As he said, I am not a programmer, but I've been involved in this community for a long time. So I don't have my old excuse of being some weird outsider. That doesn't really work. But I did not have the I am a computer scientist. And so I have whatever that would have looked like in terms of teaching my kids about computers. I have the I'm concerned about computers and their role in our world and they are everywhere and what is it like to grow up with that and what does that mean and are kids going to just passively use them or are they going to understand the ramifications of the systems that are around them and I was thinking about that when I was interested in thinking about how I was going to bring up all these things and have my son use his uh, use a computer for the first time or get involved in all of this so uh I had the idea that we were not going to just let him use computers to just use them, but to actually understand the systems and how they work and things like software freedom, which we all talk about here. So I want to make sure these ideas are accessible to somebody who's five or six. He's probably five, maybe six when we first got a computer. I didn't rush on that. I don't like the idea of giving, I see too much of this, you know, the kid gets a tablet when they're toddlers or something just to I don't know, keep them quiet or something when the parents are busy or something. And I just was not okay with that, of course, besides it being free software or proprietary software or anything else. Um, so we set up a laptop and I was deciding what to do. Should it be, you know, there's all sorts of games. I asked other people for ideas and very few ideas came through. People sort of said, well, there's this game, that's fun. And it happens to be free software. But if he has the same experience running some game that somebody would have if, they're, if it's a proprietary game, and as far as he knows, it's just, I'm playing on a game and it's on a computer. He's not learning anything about these issues. He's just playing computer games. And like, I get the satisfaction of going, well, it happens to be free software. So I don't want that. And I thought of him to actually understand what he's doing. And in the same way, I think of it like uh, the difference between having a kid and being invited to come make dinner with you and find roles that they can have in preparing food versus giving the kids some plastic fake food in some plastic fake kitchen that they can go play in their room so they don't bother you while you make dinner which kind of tells them the signal of you don't really count. You don't get to participate in this. You get to do your toy fake kid version. And that's how I see the way people are treated with computers these days. So I wanted him to understand the basics of this. And we started with just using the terminal. And so we started with some basic things like little fun things. I mean, obviously you can look at what the files are. You do LS or something, right? Um, you're certain that's the standard thing people do. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, anyway, he, you know, it's, there's some funny things that if you just start playing around, stuff happens. And uh, I got some advice on like what were fun things you could do with the terminal. So there's cow say, right? You can do that. Whoops, cow say. And then what do you do with, what do you do it? What does you show him something? You can type whatever you want. Like, what should we type? Any ideas? Just a message of some sort. Did you say GNU? Moo. Just say moo. <laughs> moo. Enter. And we're not getting into big political controversies here, but we're understanding how these systems work. And it'll get there. We will get we will get there to all the politics. But there we go. And that's funny. Okay. And then the next one that I learned was this. And you need to put on quotes in well, order for it we to learned that because of course multiple if you, words. Yeah. So multiple words, you're gonna type something with multiple words? Uh, there, let's go quick. I'll just help you with whatever you go. Whatever. If you it doesn't do it because you didn't have quotes. And so that's why we learned. So you actually try stuff, things don't work. Yeah? Yeah. Actually I'm gonna remind him though this is like years ago now because we've moved on into more and more advanced things. One of the first things that happened is we were just doing cow say. And one time he was like, well, I want to try it like something like this. I'm going to say, cow say, cow say, ha, 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 ha. that's funny. And then he'd say, cow say, cow say is cool. And then he went like this. What's going to happen? <laughs> what? And then I didn't know. And I was like, what happened? <laughs> 
oh, oh, and there's like, that's a special code. There's like, mm -hmm. computers have these special codes. Certain things mean things. That's called a bang. And if you do two of them, it does that. And then he was like, dad, that's hilarious. What would happen if we did that again? Because if you went cow say, if you did, this is going to take me a moment to, because it doesn't actually work in the terminal. Case. If you did cow say bang, bang again, it would do this. And then if you did cow say bang, bang again, it would go like, whoops, I typed it wrong. If you do cow say, <laughs> if you do this, and then you do the whole darn thing again, and then you say, yeah, at the end of it, whatever, and then it goes like this, and you say, yeah, that's great, and then it goes like this, and then you go, oh, that's great, yeah. <laughs> And then it starts going, and then it's like, oh, I see this, this is like a loop, and it's making, it's making a loop, this is crazy. So, I mean, we were laughing about this, and this is funny, and then he just started typing how, say, like, saying 5 plus 5 equals 10, or some math thing. And so I was like, oh, you can actually do math on this, you could do basic calculator, and then so we learned how you do, like, you know, the, use different symbols on the computer, and this thing. So we're learning the basic maths of whatever, how these things work. And, um, oops, it's... quit um, so we're just playing around with this and we did crazy things like whatever what do you want it to say something crazy right whatever you did something like this and I was like ah well that's funny haha and then we were like well you know, there's actually things called arguments. Like you can say how fast it says it. So we could go 80. Oh, it didn't work for some reason. It's not the right uh, speed. So it went uh, 55. What is it? Why is that not working? I don't remember. There's a pitch one. Yeah, that might be it. Might be need to be before it. Yeah, because I didn't use quotes or something, and then it didn't. It did the thing already. So speed. Oh. <laughs> um, and we had all these things prepared. So uh, talking about a bunches of crazy things, where if you go like crazy, crazy fast, I don't know if this is working. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, oh, we better take a break. A rest break? Uh, we don't have time for a rest break right now. <laughs> but um, one of the things that I did when I set up this computer was to make sure that we remember to take breaks and use good posture and other things because I don't want him to just get addicted into some you know, computer spectacle. And these are problems. So we, this is learning how to use computers in a healthy way. So I have a whole list of stuff. And I started collecting, what do you do to help build healthy habits from the beginning for how a kid is going to use a computer? We're going to... Turn that off for now, but uh, suspend the break program. Of course, he bugs me. I need to have a break program on my computer, and he'll be like, Dad, you got to take a break. Yeah. Um, and we, so we started with no internet and just using computers, and it was fun. It was being playful. We're exploring stuff, and I really think that that didn't have any downsides because you're not – first, it's like not giving somebody all the candy sugar stuff and then say – Oh, and here's some, you know, mediocre vegetables you can have. But actually learning to garden and then have some healthy fruit or something right from the garden. And nobody's like, oh, I don't like these blueberries that are great. The same sort of thing. You get to actually play and learn how computers work. And then as we get to exploring other programs and games and things, we know this stuff is what's happening. A whole ton of this is what's actually building that complicated game that does all those fancy things. So we started off with just these silly playful things, and then learning about math and whatever else. And we ended up with, here, and I'll just clear this for a moment. We ended up with showing him how to do a function. And so, oops. Speak. So we did this. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. There. There's a function. So that's how we did that. Cow speak is a function that does cow say and he speak at the same time. And they yeah. take the same argument. So now you can make a cow say that actually speaks, that speaks the thing out loud. Yeah, really. And also, we have it in our program, cow math. 
and some of it we needed to change in order to make cow faces. So yeah, so you can do <laughs> cow say with these other commands. We'll talk yeah. about. Let's just give them a tour. So yeah. Rowan, what I want to do is we're gonna have to go ls no no cd do the cow math thing. So we ended up making a script, and this is our first yeah. thing. This is not something planned. I didn't have here is the lesson plan, and everybody shall do it this way. Blah blah blah. It was like I'm going to start with something. I'm going to show him something silly, and we're going to explore. And then he was like, well, how about this thing? And then we discovered random stuff. And this is more playful and more entertaining than if it was just some strict whatever. And so hmm. we've got this program. And I'm going to do, so remember how to do this, Rowan? Git yes. checkout. So we actually have already we have used Git, and we already did, this is the thing we did for this conference. This is our third conference, by the way. We presented for the first time remotely at Libra Planet a year and a half ago. And um, once, uh, our first in person was at Seagull in last November. And in each of these, we've had wonderful experiences and continued improving what we're doing and getting feedback. So now, this is, we are going to give you a little tour of the versions of this program. So if you then go, Rowan, I'm just helping out so this goes faster. But now, can you do nano and then open the cow math thing okay. so that we can show them this code? So he wanted to say, well, you could do a, how do you combine these things and make it like, it gets really complicated if you start doing all in just on the command line, like start collecting and do and and, and try to like make bunches of things happen. So he said, well, well, that's where you use files. So you actually put a bunch of the programs that you want to do that you were just doing in the command line. You can put them into a file and then it will run all of them in one big thing. So this was the first one that he made. We'd learned how to do some math and some random stuff. And he was like, oh, I can make these different things do this. And then we're going to run it for you. So remember bash, right? Yeah. And then run it. Nine plus nine equals one hundred. Ah, there we go. We got a like complicated program now. <laughs> right? But then check out version two. All right. So version two, we went. Let's just exit that and then hit up and then do that. You can do that next time. Whoa, we made it way more complicated. And so we were like, well, how about if it asks you and you have to answer the question? And so it goes, uh, we never did that, so no, there. When you have too long, it does this. And <laughs> uh, we'd, we'd watch Duck Soup and like from March Brothers on archive.org when I was just like, he was looking for something silly. And then he like picked up that line. It was that, I, I didn't, it wasn't my idea. It's his program. <laughs> But OK, so after we presented at Libra Planet, and that was where we were at, he was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I should make it more straightforward. And we ended up with something that he could ask you and tell you wrong, but you can really keep going. You know, it just doesn't end the program. So now we've got that version. It's going to do the same thing, but actually keep going. We'll go on. Let's go to version 4. And we've got uh, doo -doo. now we can do subtraction, and so we're making it more and more complicated with all these things it can do. There we go. And the minus or subtraction or plus or addition. Go ahead. Okay. How many columns do you want? What the energy minus nine? And when you do law, it does this. We changed the first. Okay, we changed so the thing. You can say. So now we've got a program and it's asking you math questions and whatever. And then we were like, okay, well, we can move on to more advanced math. And so we've got uh, now it's the next version. And that had all sorts of challenges because we didn't want it to say asterisk. If you do asterisk, we want it to say times. We had to learn about symbols, and so there's little bugs. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? That, zero problems. Okay, well, I guess that's it. <laughs> there's all sorts of ways we could do this. We could also say. Um, 
Ja, die sind äh, Kaffee aus. Oder? Oder? <lacht> Or, aber <lacht> <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> okay, so we're learning all sorts of things by just experimenting and changing things and trying what works and we fix bugs and now we're programming and we're understanding some basic things and then the core point is, okay, this is one way to learn programming. But the purpose here isn't learning programming, the purpose is to understand how computers work and the systems of computers that we're in. So I can say, the reason we can do this is because Kause is free software and we get to use it freely and eSpeak is free software and all of these things are free software and we can share your code and put it online and you can tell some other kid about this and they could make their version and experiment with things and they can contribute and you can share the code and that is what matters. Free software means that you have freedoms to what? Freedoms to change it, to share it, and to use it freely. Right, and so when we have the source code and we have all those things, you can do that and you're not reliant on some one particular company mm -hmm. that tells you what you can or can't do or decides that you have to pay if whatever, or if they go out of business, the thing is gone, or you know, the whole proprietary world that we experience. And so after presenting at Libra Planet, for example, we had this experience where, let me just see, yeah, okay, I'll do it this way. Somebody watched our talk, and Rowan at the time, he was only six then, he's now eight, but he was like, I don't know, something about the cow doing a backflip, that would be funny, and something, and somebody was like, that's so inspiring, that's really cool. It's not just about you being the programmer on your own who does everything in isolation, you can talk to other people, you're in community, and I have never worked on cow, say, that's not a program I've ever done anything with, but I'm just gonna make this happen for you. And there's a Git patch that is put into the currently most maintained version of Kaosei that somebody needs to help actually get totally merged so that it's more available to the world, but it does this. <laughs> and now there are animated cows or animated whatever that you can add and you can make your own animations in Kausei. And that is a thing if we can just get that last page merged because somebody asked and somebody else in the community was able to make that change. And Rowan understands that that's not something that happens with proprietary software because you can beg the company to whatever, but they're not gonna listen to you. And this is like anybody can come and change the software and share it and develop it no matter what. Um, and of course, it is true that you can make your own files. So like Rowan made a file that looked like whatever he wanted it to look like. And there are other ones where you can make it look different. Last little thing I'll say on the... Uh, I don't know, that's not the right one, sorry. Final version we've got here, the version, version 6. Did we do that one? No, I typed it. Okay, good. And the minus of subtraction plus composition or catalyst for multiplication. Okay, so here, just do do some some subtraction, right? And then it's all going to be one. One is the highest number, one is the last. And this is the new part. That's a, that's a new part, yeah. So how about whatever eight? Well, just you could you could do much more advanced than this. He was joking the last time about. What if we added exponentiation? And actually, what about if you do an exponent exponentiation multiple times? So like, if you said, what is centillion to the power of centillion, a centillion times? And I had to ask my mathematician friend that that's called, uh, what's it called? I actually forget. It's called tetration. Oh, tetration, because it's the fourth hyper level of math. And he was like, what if we had cow math do tetration? And I was like, well, that, I think the computer would crash and I don't think there's a computer in the world that knows that could handle tetration, which is exponentiation done in exponentiation, the ex exponential number of times. Um, anyway, what in seven minus four? and if you get it right, you did it. What in seven minus three? But if you get it wrong, you are wrong. Do it again. So the <laughs> face changes to tell you because like you do this, that, and there's so many things we could just imagine all the possibilities of where this could go. Anything else you want to tell them about CalMath? Well, we can show you the full program now.
Well, we could, but also they can check it out at yeah. Codebird because it's published. And our next step is to add a license and a readme file and learn how these projects work. And that's pretty easy. I can, he already knows about licensing. Also, I was, a good thing would be to get CalFlip into CalMath. We do want to do that, yes. And then maybe at the end, when you do a really good job, it could keep track of how many. There's, we can go on and on and on about all the things it could do. Of course, kids don't just want to play in the terminal, and he's got all sorts of other friends who play all sorts of video games. Yeah. So I just I wanted to push him to try. Well, there's like games that people do in the terminal, and there's very simple little programs like from BSD games. There's this one, Pig, and what you do with this, Rowan. I haven't even showed you this one lately. Uh, type, just type something, some message, like a message in English. You choose. Here's you it. choose. And then it does that. <laughs> this is called Pig Latin. You may useche. Useche. But the but he could look at the source code of this since it's not that much more complicated than like what we did with our script. And then maybe he could learn that he could change this program and make it do something different. And you could learn by actually looking at the source code. So that whole idea is part of something I want to build into this process. But we're just figuring this out as we go. And that's partly why we're here to invite other people to help us with building a whole dynamic of how kids can work together and have good lesson plans and have access to this. I needed help from somebody else to figure out some of these steps. I can help him with figuring out the licensing and the readme and the other stuff with the, the get things at the basic level. Um, but despite all my best efforts and the fact that you can even have Tetris in the terminal and all sorts of crazy things I can show you, uh, what Rowan actually really got more into was playing games like Super Tux Cart. Yeah. Tell them about the characters, just show them a little bit. There are a bunch of characters and you have to, and some of them you have to win. You have to race and win to unlock them. Yeah, so like what's this character? Wilbur from Gimp. Oh, did you just play something? I don't know. I, mean, you, I don't even know this game. So, like, at some point, I ended up falling into the, okay, you can use your computer thing, and he's sort of doing stuff. And this is, this is pretty darn good software. So these are, like, highlights. And I started reviewing all the different games out there. So there are games that are, like, really pretty advanced. Like, this is a standout example of free software. And then there are games that were like half, uh, they kind of worked, they're beta, they were something broken. And I couldn't find any guides that literally said, here's the free software games that are really just great and they're not compromised and they're really good and this is going to work well. It's just, I, I found lists of giant lists of games, but not games that would be like appropriate for kids. Some of them are violent or some of them are on themes that I wouldn't want to get into or some of them are too complicated. Okay, so. This is actually fantastic, and it actually has like some server version, so there's things where people can play multiplayer online. Again, I don't know, I haven't explored it all, but we've talked about the different characters in that game, which are all logos from like free software projects. Yeah, right? Also, we have another program called MindTest, which I like even more, I'd say, and thanks to Root in the back there, he got a server set up for me. So I had not actually set up a server. I like installed the thing after somebody at Libre Planet was like, Rowan, you got to try mind test. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And something I've heard people get really addicted to Minecraft or something. And, but I was like, okay, it's free software. We'll try it. And then, yeah, he got really addicted to it and started doing all these crazy things or whatever, but like he didn't have anybody to play with. And I, I don't mean to embarrass you, Rowan. I know this has like been a whole story. We had this, all this drama during second grade because the other kids were all like into Minecraft and he was like, no, Minecraft is proprietary <laughs> software. And I tell them like, you shouldn't use proprietary software. It should use free software. And they wouldn't listen to me. And he was like mad about it. He didn't want to be friends with that other kid who was too addicted to Minecraft. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you, this is, you have to learn how to, if you want to invite people over, then you want to be their friends and get along with them and then invite them to, you know, they're not the enemy. They like, Okay, so this is up and now we're learning about how to do free software advocacy and activism and understand all this stuff. And so this is a, a big thing. And it was like a big deal to Rowan to show up at a conference here and be a little bit disappointed when somebody was like, hey, are you into Minecraft? And he was like, no, of course not. What's wrong with you? And then like somebody else was like, hey, have you tried Mindtest? And he was like, oh, thank you. Somebody else knows about Mindtest. 
And I don't know. I actually don't know anything about this. I like installed it. I let him use it. I never tried it myself. I've got busy with other things. And uh, but then he's like done all this stuff. And next thing I know, he's you know built a village and a train system and uh, all these things. So there are some good free software games. And then I can talk to him about how if you use Minecraft, I don't know much about it, and I shouldn't judge because I haven't really tried it. But it is true that you have to have some like account with Microsoft, and then there's somehow they're getting a bunch of money out of everybody, and then you have to buy these particular proprietary things. And with this, you could have a server, and you could connect with other people. And if we can build this type of thing and get people to understand and care about this, um, so yes, we now have a server that we can use, and you can get a friend to set up a laptop and. We, but we're talking about using it because we understand the values of software freedom, not just because it's some game that you can play. Let's take a break for just a moment, Ryan. We'll come back to it. You can show, he would love to show anybody who wants to check out MindTest anytime mm -hmm. later at the conference. Um, but I will tell you, there's a couple other things that I wanted to mention. Like uh, we read Pepper and Carrot, which is a wonderful webcomic made by David Revoy, and it's all made with entirely free software. Krita mainly, and a bunch of other things. And hey, the Krita is one of the characters in Super Tux Card, so it all ties together. And the source files are all available. So it's not just that the software is free, but the cultural work is free. And so we can talk about the same ideas there. And um, I want to give a shout out to uh, Matthias Kircher, who wrote this amazing book, Ada and Zangeman, which is totally great he gave me one of the like sent me one of the first copies when it was first printed i was like you guys got to check this out and so this is a book that is a picture book about software freedom it talks about how this you know poor girl ada who lives near the dump and doesn't have the fancy things that some of the other kids have you know it was like the other kids have these fancy electric skateboards but they're controlled by some proprietary company and, da -da 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 -da, and it's this wonderful story and then i went so far because this is how i talked to rowan about these things uh, well, it has this like poetic justice at the end of the story. They're like, we all protested and said, we want the code. And the, we got the government to say no more proprietary software licenses. And like, it's all like we win the day and then we have a land for free software. That's not how this story plays out. And um, it's a really, I, I've heard from multiple people, like adults who read this were like, oh, I get for software freedom. Like, I understand that finally. Like, it's a really good book in that sense. But my vision of it would be at the end, hey, this is free culture. So we could someday go and get Krita and change the whatever, make our own graphics and change the ending and make our own version of it, because we, we could. And my not poetic justice version would be at the end, the guy of the rich proprietary company is like, Ada, you did amazing with your programming. That was so super. I'll give you a job for a million dollars a year if you will come and work for me and can do the proprietary software instead of the free software. <laughs> and then the book ends with her being like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> and the, you know, here's another thing that I have a vision of where this could all go. There needs to be obviously an Ada with the skateboard like character in Super Tux Cart, because that's perfect. And now there's this character, it all ties together. So we need to learn how to make characters in Super Tux Cart or do stuff in Blender. And so we can all do amazing things with free software. Um, so, for example, Blender is, of course, free software, and there's Blender movies. And so I was showing Rowan that and talking about that and how we can actually get the files. Yes, so, and there is one that is particularly extra good. It's called Glass Half. It's about perspective. And there's this guy and a woman. Well, and, uh, well we could, but okay, it might be a bit hard. Go. It's only a few minutes long. We got 15 minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Just double click. This is our favorite of all the Blender movies. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, box. Oh, it's the one that's 
All right, so we can talk about how Blender works and how we can, that's entirely free software and how that's entirely free culture. We can actually get the assets and start playing with them. So we're not starting from zero. We don't have to make our own programs from nothing. We're building on what everybody else has done. And this is how software freedom works. And this is how cultural freedom works. And Rowan understands all those things now. And then we can start talking about how does he express those to other kids and how does he have connections in explaining these ideas to everybody because this is making sense of the world around us and the computers that we're using. And so that's our journey up to this point of what we've done in trying to navigate this world that we find ourselves in. And there's a uh, thing here. So I'm going to, let's see, is it, um, there we go. So we have a Codeberg repo in which I've put together all the notes of everything we figured out so far, including some reviews of other games and, my best attempts to be like, is this really a healthy game for kids to be spending time on? Or is this emphasizing software freedom concepts versus just being entertaining? Is this something that, you know, I don't really know everything about it. I just have been doing my best to collect these things because I couldn't find anybody else who'd already put together something comparable. And I will say also that there are, of course, all these visual programming languages. Uh, Devin makes music blocks, which is wonderful. And there's Scratch and these other things. But my impression, again, this is a bias. And I need to be open-minded to really giving them a try. And that's something we're exploring. Although we spent some time with Scratch and Blockly a little bit. It feels a little constrained. It feels like there's this block that goes into this thing. And if you don't like it, you move it over here, which feels a little bit like, I don't know, the wrong medium to me. Like computers are, you type these things on the thing and that's how you do programming. And if you do it with physical blocks in the world, or you're hacking on stuff and doing woodworking in the garage, that's one thing. But kind of fussing with a thing on the screen to put blocks together feels artificial and constrained in a way to me. That's just my inclination. I don't want him to use, uh, for example, um, one of the free software things everybody mentions for kids is um, G Compris. And it has all these like younger kids games for using a computer. But not only are they relatively boring, like this just basically looks like, well, this is a lousy version of what people are doing with proprietary software. It, uh, it has stuff like there's an abacus program or something. I was like, that's terrible. Like, just get him a beads with like real abacus. Let him use his fingers. So one of the rules that I have is I don't want him to do anything on a computer that would be better done not on a computer. The goal isn't to use computers. 
The goal is to understand society and understand the systems around us. And I don't want to put things on computers just to be on computers. Uh, so there are principles that I've sort of laid out in how I'm describing what we're trying to do. And then I'm trying to figure out and navigate how to put this all together. And it's still a work in progress. So I invite everybody to check this out, ask questions, uh, talk to us about these things, give us ideas, and contribute even to help us build a resource so that the next generation will actually understand and care about the technology around us. Ron, do you want to say anything else before we uh, open up for questions? No. No? Not right now? OK. Yeah. Well, he has lots to say at all sorts of times, depending upon what, what topics we bring up. But thank you for coming. Uh, we are around, and he'll be around more and happy to talk to people about any of these things. Uh, we're open. Have, thanks for coming. <laughs> What's your opinion on graphical programming languages in general? Like the one that I tend to, the one that I sometimes use is is actually for music. Um, I I actually also think that I, I also tend to pro I prefer programming languages that aren't graphical because I actually do think that the graphical nature of programming languages is like a it's a limiter in a way in a way because or it's like it kind of gets in the way of like what I'm wanting to do because pure data it doesn't make sense how I why I add like you know if I want like a thousand of something and I want each like so so I, I think I get the question the question is sort of to say more about visual programming or sort of visual interfaces for computer use and the truth is I look at each of these things and sort of think, like as an educator, is this helpful for kids in understanding this core point that I want to get at, which is understanding the technology and knowing how to use it and knowing how to be in control of it and how to communicate about it, like looking at the big systems. And I can't say that a visual programming language is necessarily harmful in that way or anything like that. I think they all have their pros and cons. So I would want kids not to think the way computers work is you push blocks around, but I want them to understand this is a tool that exists in a space for some reason that the reason somebody typed a bunch of stuff to make this work and in the background there's typing and maybe it's practical to just put these lines together or something but you kind of know what you're doing uh, but that's just my bias about it the truth is i haven't done tons with pure data and i'd be open to trying it and we'll see how it goes with roman or something and you know i i I have in my list of steps to do to spend even that much more time on these things. But I will say one last thing as an educator on that topic. Uh, I really love how Scratch emphasizes people sharing their projects and taking each other's projects under a free license and then adapting it. So there's a bit of that, although it doesn't seem to be as front and center as I want it to be. Uh, but I have seen way too much in all sorts of programming things that's like not encouraging people to really do silly, fun things. It's just like uh, do these relatively tutorial boring sort of steps and look how it got a result and now you get this thing that you know we made a drawing that looks worse than what you would do with crayons I don't know why that's interesting like it's much more fun to have eSpeak say some bizarro gibberish and we laugh about it than it is to say it said hello world look I did a thing and I did the whatever and everybody makes this exact program that's really dull like we have to know how to make it entertaining So what is it? Make code. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you from my like overall perspective that uh, I don't have any problem with that type of method. I do see in the world largely that I run into people who did various types of co coding education stuff, including whether it was something like make code or something that was more text-based. Either way, uh, I find there are people who are way more advanced at programming than me who have no clue about whether programs are doing anything in the world that's any good or harmful or helpful or anything like that because nobody bothered to tell them 
that things like software freedom matter as concepts or think about the ramifications of what computers are doing in society. So I would like to see all of the computer educational stuff have like more of an ethics component. That's my focus here. Yeah. Yeah, Michael. Uh, Tom talked a bit about the Uh, I would just ask Rowan. <laughs> Rowan, how, how has it been learning about these things, and understanding software freedom, and then going to school and seeing what other people are doing with computers? How do you feel about that? What's, tell, they, don't, they weren't there, so tell them how it's been. Well, the way it's been at school with the computer stuff is they have like a bunch of proprietary software games all loaded into one thing. And they have this proprietary software program, which allows the teacher to control, to, to get to get the kids in trouble if they don't use the programs they are allowed to at that time. Yeah, I, he, I mean, every class, I guess, is different in some ways, but I know that he had, like, he told me about how they saw ads in school because they were using some, you know, thing where it was like yeah. some website where you watch some ad before you get to do some game or something. It's called Cool Math Games. It, what it basically does is y you have to, like, watch ads before you play the game. And sometimes in some of the games, when you, like, when you lose or something, it will make you watch ads in order to, so that you can start alive again. I, I'm really worried about the future of where this is all heading and like the, the other kids in his class, I really think are just like, I mean, who knows what, if that's all you know, I mean, I keep saying like, I mean, if you, if you just go to McDonald's or something, that's what your family does and you don't know otherwise, like you don't know what it's like to have a garden or to eat healthy food. Like somehow you have to learn about how these, what's healthy and what's not healthy. And the teachers aren't teaching that they're not, they're just teaching the idea of like, you should know computing. So I'm very skeptical of any type of learning programming just on its own, like just for learning it. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, well, obviously they need to uh, know what an ad blocker is. Well, Rowan knows what an ad blocker is, but his teachers don't. Yes. Need, Rowan needs to tell all of the teachers to install uBlock Origin on all the computers for you <laughs> grade or something like that. Yeah, learning about these things and the whole systems that, you know, the, the fact teachers is... Teachers don't listen to kids in my school. It's the kids that I made listen to the teachers. <laughs> That's a very statement. I remember I was in middle school. I got in trouble for listening to the teachers. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So I think I think the big issue is there is this big challenge of it is it is a very complex social skill to figure out how to look at the systems in the world and talk to other people so they understand. Yeah, in really. my school, it's sad, I'm sad to say that my teachers do not accept feedback. They're afraid of feedback. Uh, that that may they don't change. want to be maybe that was last criticized year. by their kids. That's <laughs> So, as you think about kids being involved about bots, what has your experience been around events that encourage kids to participate in the community You mean you mean like 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 here where there's not many kids, but he's he's here. I I would like to imagine that there are places where somehow there's a more kid oriented sort of, I, I don't know of anything. I mean, I, but I don't know everything. I have my limited perspective. So I try to connect with people as much as I can. And this is relatively new to me, but uh, there, there needs to be these things. Uh, I have, I was glad to say that he's not the only kid here at Fossey and 
Uh, some of the other kids are more, even even here, the people who know about free software just have their kids playing Minecraft. And <laughs> Rowan was pretty, you know, I don't know. Everybody's different. He was very opinionated about it and like really upset that the other kids were like obsessed with Minecraft. But I used to be when I was younger. He, 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 when he was first learning about these things, he was very, uh, a, a, a little bit more reactive about it. And now he's learning to be a bit more jaded. But, but <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's <laughs> We're inspired as well. It's it's a mix of everything. You have to understand the problems and you have to understand the things to appreciate. So I'll say this as a final thing. We are so grateful to be asked here and to have this community welcome me and my son Rowan here to be part of this community. And so there is something really wonderful and inspiring to draw from. And also there are many, 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 many problems to face and to understand. And so we can look at what to appreciate and what we need to work on improving. And we're all here to work on both of those things.